Okay, so with that, I'm going to go into a couple demos. I'm going to begin with the, um, the classic sample application, which is actually part of that um, enterprise integration pattern book that I referred to. It's the loan broker. So in enterprise integration patterns, uh, throughout the, the book, actually, there are interludes, and many of those deal with the loan broker application. The concept is pretty simple. We have multiple banks. We want to send a loan request. Part of the loan request is to determine the credit score of the, of the, um, the person trying to acquire the loan, send that to the banks, and then get back the, resu the results. What we've done is we've added an aggregator that knows how to determine whether the request is uh, – for just a single best quote or whether you want to get back all quotes. And the way we do that is by using this gateway. It's the same thing that you saw earlier, but we're adding a sub-element here to fine-tune something based on a method that's being invoked. So the loan broker gateway, this is our entry point. We don't have to implement this interface ourselves because the framework does it for us, but it provides two different methods. One of them returns a list of all quotes and the other returns just the best quote. And the way that we determine what to do is by setting this header on the entry point. It could have also been done through an annotation on the method. Then we go to the credit score to add the credit score as a header by evaluating the spell expression, which invokes a bean within the context called Credit Bureau. It passes the payload, which is the loan request object. Then we have a recipient list router that's looking at the credit scores. Each bank has a different threshold. And what's going to happen is we're going to send to one or more banks depending on the credit score. If our credit score is really low, then EasyBank might be the only one that's going to offer us a loan. But if it's really high, then we should get a loan quote from each of these banks. And the banks are just kind of stubbed out in this example. Um, the rate for each bank depends on, um, on what its credit score is. So you're, you're basically expecting to get a better rate for the better banks. And then the only real Java code here that's relevant is the loan quote aggregator. And this guy is fairly straightforward. It's grabbing that header that we set earlier. And if it's present, it is only returning the best quote. Otherwise, it returns all of them, but they'll be sorted. Now, the main method that triggers all this is just starting up, creating that application context, getting the gateway, which is just an implementation of the interface. So there's no messaging awareness here at all. And we're going to create a loan request, and we're going to call the broker twice, once to get the best quote and once to get all quotes. Now, it just so happens that our credit score uh, part is mocked up to just be some randomly generated credit score, so we should see different values here every time we run it. <clears throat> so I run the application, and the first credit score was 700. So it got a rate back from Friendly Bank. That was the best rate it could get. This other, um, when, we, when we retrieved all quotes, it had a better credit score, and that one gets back the results from three different banks. And the, the best bank is the one listed at the top. I can run it again just so you see. If we get a different um, result, Okay, this time the credit score wasn't much better here, but the bottom example actually was a better credit score, so we got four banks instead of three. That's just showing you how that works. And you notice that the gateway method had return values. The aggregator downstream is actually generating that return value, and it's then sent back to the user. So that's one of the demos that you can um, play around with. It's in our, in our sample Git repository for the Spring Integration Project. Now, I want to show another example <coughs> that uses the um, adapters that we provide with, with Spring Integration. So here, what I'm doing, I'll begin by just showing you the outbound side. We've got a travel gateway. And with travel gateway, we're going to get the weather based on the zip code, or we're going to get the traffic based on the zip code. And the way that this works is that downstream, we have two different components. So we have our travel gateway. It's setting a request type header, and then we have a header value router, which just looks at that header value and determines what channel to send to. We could have also done something with the spell expression here or a groovy script if we wanted to. Now, downstream, we're either hitting the weather channel or the traffic channel, and we've split those out into two different config files, just so you can see kind of the modularization. The traffic service 
is actually a REST-based web service. So we're using the HTTP namespace and our outbound gateway, which builds on REST template. This is just like the example you saw in the slides where the zip code is going to be replaced from, in this case, just the payload of the message. Our other service is a SOAP-based web service. We're adding the SOAP action in a header enricher that comes with the WS namespace of Spring integration. And then we're invoking that web service. And that's all that we have to do to invoke the web service. There's no code involved. It's all just configuration of these components within the config. Now, if I run the demo, we're going to see weather and traffic because it makes two different requests. Okay, so we see at the top, this is actually passing in the New York zip code. We get the weather is 53. Um, down here we have traffic incidents. Now, what I want to show you, this is a couple outbound adapters invoking web services. Um, I want to show you some other adapters that we can use with the same application. If I scroll up to the demo that we did for Spring 1 a few weeks ago, it's the same basic configuration and I'll, I'll start by just showing you the, the diagram. We begin with the request channel. <clears throat> and the request channel, instead of having a gateway in front of it, we're going to put another adapter in here, which is going to be XMPP on the inbound side, which means I can use Google Talk, uh, Google Chat, to send a message to this channel using that adapter. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Then what's happening is we're going to invoke the traffic service, which is a simple REST service. And we're going to invoke the weather service, which is a SOAP web service. So we have that SOAP action added to it. We invoke that. And then things get interesting. At the weather response, we're actually going to send that out to Twitter. And at the same time, we're going to send it to an aggregator that is going to combine the weather results from the uh, SOAP web service with the traffic results from the REST web service. They get combined and then sent out in an email. So the result of this um, it's the same basic application you saw a minute ago, but we're adding on the inbound side XMPP, and on the outbound side we're adding Twitter as well as email. The nice thing is that I can do all the testing of this application I want using the demo that I just showed you, where it is using a simple gateway and getting back XML. So I can, I can test at that level and then plug in these adapters to get the extra functionality. Here's our inbound XMPP adapter. It's referencing an XMPP connection instance. You can see I just commented out the travel gateway to make that the entry point instead. And there's no reason why you couldn't have both if you also wanted to be able to invoke it programmatically. Now down here we see the email. We have a header and richer to add the different properties that you want in your email. And then we send that to the mail outbound channel adapter. There's not much to it. It's referencing a spring mail sender. Um, but you can actually just provide uh, a couple simple properties if you don't need to do anything fancy in your mail sender itself. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is bring up a few different windows. This is the email account that should be receiving the result, travel, and weather in an email. It also is going to be the point that I begin with because I'm going to use this client um, to send a message to the other um, the other Google account, which is going to be the one logged on for that XMPP inbound adapter. I'm also going to bring up the Twitter window so that we can see uh, we can see that Oleg is testing the Twitter samples as we speak. <clears throat> so we've got um, he must be doing the same thing. Now I'm going to have this open as well as the web browser. I'm going to start this demo with the config file that I was just showing you. And what we should see, when I send a zip code inside of a chat message, we're going to see a few different things. First, we should see some output within the console. Then we should see the weather tweeted from our spring underscore EIP Twitter account. And then finally, we'll see an email pop up within this uh, account that includes the weather as well as the traffic. So down here, I see spring integration is now logged in because the application is running. And I'll give it the Boston zip code. We see the output in the console, so obviously something's happening. And then in my Twitter client, now I see partly sunny in Boston, temperature 53. In my email client, 
there's the travel inquiry, and I see some traffic incidents and the partly sunny in Boston 53. Um, now, this would obviously be something we want to format. We could easily plug in a transformer to generate a, a nicer message, maybe even an HTML-based message. But the point is that we're able to have the same system working with a number of different adapters, um, and there's really almost no Java code involved here at all. It's just the configuration of these adapters. Anywhere that there is Java code, we could have either spell expressions or Groovy scripts as well and make it dynamic. For instance, if you want to use Groovy to generate the email content, that would just be a matter of using a transformer and then have a Groovy script referenced within that. Okay, so with that, I think we're pretty close to um, the end. That should be the last slide. I'll just bring up the links here so that you can see where to go next. Obviously, the Spring Framework itself for the first half of the slides, um, all of those features are in Spring 3.0, scheduling, task execution, JMS. Then there's the Spring AMQP project. Um, Spring Integration Project itself, the Enterprise Integration Patterns website, which I highly recommend. Um, I, I recommend reading the book as well if you're building this kind of application, but the website gives you a nice, quick overview. And then some of the sample code was, um, that, well, some similar samples are actually available at this GitHub account, but most of the samples that I've shown just now are available either in the Spring 1, uh, recent Spring 1 2GX Git repository or the actual Spring Integration Samples project. Both of those are available through git.springsource.org. And with that, I will switch back over and take some questions. <laughs>